Hello students, so today we are going to learn the second part of the chapter 1, Heredity and Evolution. In this particular part of the chapter, we will be learning Darwin's theory of natural selection, Lamarckism, speciation, human evolution. Hopefully, the first part is clear to all of you. As you have seen images, animation related to the topic in the first part, here as well you will be seeing some beautiful images and animation. Now, see here, the second slide, I put up an animation which you can come across the evolutionary process right from the apes till the modern man. So, as you learn in this particular part of the chapter about the Neanderthal man, Cro-Magnum man, Australopithecus, Ramapithecus. So, here you can see then the animation, the different uh, species present in different ages. So, it's a beautiful animation depicting different species in different races. So, lastly, you can see the Homo sapiens. Similarly, second animation also you can see the minor changes which takes place in the facial appearance, the front part of the facial region. Now, coming to the Darwin's theory of natural selection. Now, on to the right side, you can see the book on the origin of species by Darwin. So, first point, Charles Darwin had collected innumerable species or specimens of plants and animals and depending upon the observation of those specimens, he published the theory of natural selection which preaches the survival of the fittest. Now, before making any analysis, students, Darwin had collected a lot of specimens of plants and animals and he was observing all these things in detail. And after that, he had published the book about all these different species. For this purpose, Darwin had published a book titled Origin of Species. Now, also if you see in the later part here, the survival of the fittest. So, I had mentioned which species overcomes the different climatic condition, temperature, food, the habitat. They survive and then they move on to the next generation with the fittest of offsprings. But the one which is not able to survive, they perish. So, here he had published in detail about the different species in the book Origin of Species. While explaining the concept, Darwin says that all organisms reproduce proliferally. Means all the organisms reproduce continuously and because of this as uh, from the parents offspring was formed and then it goes on. And the numbers they usually vary from species to species but they reproduce prolifically means continually. All the organisms compete with each other in a life-threatening manner. In this competition, only those organisms sustain which show the modifications essential for winning the competition. What does that mean, students? Now, as we know, there are many different species. So, even at that point of time or even in the present era, the one which is able to overcome the different conditions, there is always a competition between the species, same species, also different species. So, I give an example here. Now, for now, deers. Uh, giraffe, zebra, horse, they uh, all feed on grass, right? So, there are uh, various species of deer, they all feed on grass, right? So, they themselves uh, try to find out wherever food availability is, they uh, compete with each other. Now, other species, zebra, giraffe, horse, they also feed on grass, right? So, there will be competition intra as well as inter, okay? Also, natural selection plays important role because nature selects only those organisms which are fit to live and rest perish. So, as I mentioned, the environment, climate, all these also important factors. The species which are able to adjust or acclimatize to the different climatic conditions, they survive. The one which is not able to adjust to different climate, they perish means they don't survive. Further, sustaining and selected organisms can perform reproduction and thereby 
giving rise to new species with their own specific characters now as we are learning the one which is able to overcome all the different conditions whether it's natural condition climatic condition the food the habitat everything they give rise to new species the new species form can have a better genetic trait which can overcome much more difficult type of climatic condition or environment so darwin's theory of natural selection was widely accepted for long duration however some objections were raised against the theory now whatever darwin was put up was accepted by most of the scientists at that point of time and even it was uh, utilized for long period of time only there were certain objections now what are these here some of the objections are first point natural selection is not the only factor responsible for evolution so the question is uh, the natural selection as given by uh, darwin was not the only factor there are many more factors there was one of the objections now second darwin did not mention any explanation about useful and useless modifications means there are certain characteristics which are present which are useful even they continue to the next generation certain uh, organs or certain uh, parts which are present when they uh, move forward in the next generation or they are seen in the next generation but they are of no use so even that those useful and useless modification which are seen even the, that uh, Darwin was not able to explain or put points related to it. Third, there is no explanation about slow changes and abrupt changes. Now, what was observed that certain changes they take place very slowly, certain very quickly, suddenly. That is abrupt changes without any reason. So there was no reasons for that as well. So irrespective of all these objections, Darwin's work on evolution has been a milestone but even though these few objections were there but overall work was appreciated and it is a, a big achievement or you can say milestone in the study of evolution okay now students one more thing just to add for information now whatever things were identified discovered or um, innovated now these things has to be properly put up so the scientists uh, in those days whenever they identify certain thing so they get, give a reason now this uh, they put forward into a panel of members now each member may ask 10 different questions if it is accepted the reasons are valid they are accepted that is in case of darwin's theory most of the points were reasonable was what was happening in that point of time and even in a longer period of time only with the few objections as you have seen but in case if any of the theories which you have put forward and was not explained properly that was to be discarded or in simple words it was to be put into dustbin okay so the, there is to be a lot of work done so darwin before putting up his theory he had uh, what he had mentioned he had learned about lot many plants and animal species only then he put forward his theory so you can see his book the origin of species so here you can see uh, variation in uh, species of butterfly yellow brown so there is a genetic variation within a population which can be inherited then competition as i mentioned there can be inter or intra intra within the same type of species inter different now you may have be having intra school competition within uh, standard 10th 9th 8th right or other classes but inter school between different schools right so there is again competition in these animals as well third adaptation individuals with beneficial adaptation are more likely to survive to pass on their genes now if you see the birds having two different color coloration now you might have heard the term camouflage right so if the species by adapting or camouflaging or changing according to the environment they are beneficial and they survive and those genes are passed on to the next generation that is why we use the term hereditary and then leading to evolution and selection over many generations there is a change in allele frequency 
doing evolution. Now, what is this allele? In simple words, factor. Okay, or we can say in other words, gene. So if you see here the bark of the stem, which is usually dark brownish color. So these brown colored butterflies, they actually adapt or camouflage to that. The other colored, colored ones are visible and these are uh, the predators, they catch on these prey. That is the butterfly became prey of the predators like birds who feed on these butterflies. But this brown colored one will not be visible because they get camouflage themselves. Next, introduction to scientists. Now, in the text, students, you are learning about two scientists. One is Darwin, other is Lamarck. So, I put the points related to the uh, scientists because it's always necessary to know about the scientists, how they work. So, it always creates an interest. So, here, uh, Charles Robert Darwin, 1809 to 1882. This English biologist proposed the theory of evolution. So, Charles Darwin was the one who put up the theory of evolution. He showed that all these species of living organism have been gradually evolved over the period of thousands of years from common ancestor. So, what Darwin told was there was a common ancestor through which others have been evolved or from one generation to other generation new species have been formed. He proposed that principle of natural selection is responsible for this evolution. Now, students, the term natural selection means nature selects the species. Now, as we just learned in the previous slides, that is the species which are able to overcome climate, temperature, surrounding, habitat, different uh, environment, food habitat, everything, they survive and they give rise to new species in the next generation. Now, the second, it is about Jean Baptist Lamarck, 1744 to 1829. Lamarck proposed that activities of organisms are responsible for their evolution. So, what Lamarck told was slightly differing from Darwin. So, he told that the activities which is carried by the organism, they are the reason for evolution. That is, those characters they pass on from one generation to other generation. Okay. So, this French naturalist proposed that each animal or plant undergoes some changes in lifespan and those changes are transferred to the next generation and such changes occur in the next subsequent generation too. So, what Lamarck had put up students, well, he told that plants and animals in the entire year or in during the lifetime, there is some changes taking place. These changes, they get incorporated into their genes and they pass on to the next generation. That is from parents to the offspring and so on. The evolution process takes place. So here the image of the scientist Lamarck and one of the simple examples here put up giraffe, the present day giraffe and the giraffe was what the species was earlier. You can see the size, maybe size of a deer, zebra, very small size and then as wherever they were living, the food was not available. The grass availability on the ground was very, very less. So, they had to depend on trees. And the trees where they were present were all tall trees. So, so they had to stretch their neck every time they had to feed on the leaves. So, during the process from one generation to the second generation to the third and fourth or in the present generation, you can see the size of the giraffe and the neck of the giraffe which is long. So, that is how the evolution has taken place by suggested by Lamarck. Okay. Now, Lamarckism. So, few detailed aspect of Lamarckism. Jean Baptiste Lamarck proposed that morphological changes occurring in living organism are responsible for evolution. And the reason behind those morphological changes is activities or laziness of that organism. So, whatever morphological. Now, students, what is morphological? In the uh, first slide also we learned. Means the external characteristic, the outside features. Maybe the height, the body structure, shape, all those things is the morphological, the external appearance we can say. He called this concept as principle of use 
or disuse of organs. So what he told the animals or the species, they use certain organs, they don't use certain organs. The one which they use, they these pass on to the next generation. One which does not use, they remain dormant and in the evolutionary process, they become disused or as we use it a vestigial organ. Further, he said that neck of the giraffe has been too long due to browsing on leaves of tall plants by extending their neck for several generations. Now students, the earlier said as I showed you, the size of the giraffe was like a deer. Now the present, now uh, the browsing term is a normal computer term which you use. Let us keep on checking uh, the uh, net, your uh, instruments, mobile, laptop, right? So your giraffe while browsing the leaves means feeding on the leaves of the plants which are actually tall. Uh, in several generations to come, their neck become longer and longer. And you can see the present day giraffe with a long neck. Similarly, shoulders of the iron smith have been very strong due to frequent hammering movement. So the iron smith who usually hammers the iron continuously throughout the day. So his shoulder has been very uh, strong because of the continuous hammering movement. Similarly, wings of birds like ostrich and emu have become weak due to no use. Also, you might have seen the bird ostrich or emu. The ostrich, the body is very heavy, huge, but the wings are small. Similarly, emu, again the structure size is comparatively bigger where the wings are comparatively smaller. Since they are not using the wings, the future generations wear wings which is was very small and weak. So they have become flightless bird means the birds which does not fly right. Then legs of the birds like swan and duck have become useful for swimming due to living in water and snakes have lost their legs by modification in their body for burrowing habit. Now so here the duck or we can say aquatic bird, the birds which are found on the water bodies, lake, rivers, seas, right? They usually feed on the fishes. So these birds have webbed feet, which helps in swimming, right? And similarly snakes. Now snakes comes under which family? Reptile, which you might have learned in the chapter Kingdom Animalia, or even the chapter related to Kingdom Animalia in detail is also present in this video link. So you can go through with the different uh, images and animations of snakes and other species of kingdom animalia. Okay. Now, so snakes, uh, which comes as reptilia, all the reptile species, whether it is crocodile, whether it is uh, lizards, whether it is uh, tortoise, turtles, all has got legs. Only snakes are not having, right? So they are the modification. Okay. Now, students, just for your additional information, which always keep on adding. To tell you snakes also have legs now you will say sir snakes we don't see any legs but as I am saying you may say then as sir told it should be right right yes snakes do have legs as we are learning over here they might have lost because of modification now students in any case if we do a dissection means cut open the snake body we can see short limbs four limbs of the snake present inside which has become vestigial means they are present but become very reduced and vestigial since it is uh, was present in the earlier times where they were living deep in the burrow means underground so where the legs were of no use so in the further generation the snakes the legs were become vestigial okay so this was again the modification seen because of burrowing habit which was put forth by Lamarckism so all these examples are type of acquired characters and are transformed from one generation to another generation means what is acquired means we obtain when during our lifetime so whatever character we obtain we pass on from one generation to the next generation that is from grandparents to parents parents to the offspring right or the next generation this is called as theory of inheritance of acquired character or otherwise called as Lamarckism. So Lamarck, the scientist, all the theory is called as Lamarckism. So what is the theory named actually? Theory of inheritance of acquired character. What is the meaning of inheritance? 
one which is uh, obtained during the lifetime which is inherited and that is passed on to the next generation clear students now moving further students here i put two more images one is a picture image showing the earlier giraffe how it was very small dog shape or a deer shape further in the next generation it has become a long with a long neck as the food availability was present in tall trees and we can see animation image where you can see a baby giraffe following the mama giraffe right so how the long neck which was evolved over the years now moving to the next point development of organs due to specific activities or their degeneration due to no use at all was widely accepted but transfer of those character from generation to generation was rejected so here students we can split this point into two half first half what is told is specific activities or their degeneration due to no use so as lamarck told uh, that the certain characteristic which was not uh, carried forward or the organs which are not used they become degenerated and it will be of no use was widely accepted but the characteristic which is passed on from one generation to other generation was totally rejected reason uh, if i give you one simple example for your understanding of this point now in case of uh, in india the tradition of piercing the ears right the ladies or even in case of gents right so when we pierce our ears we don't find in the next generation the daughters having the ear pierced right otherwise they don't have to pierce automatically there will be a hole in the ear to put on the earring right it is not there so that is one of the examples why it is not accepted that is character from one generation to other generation passed on is not accepted because in that case as i give you the example many such examples are there which is not seen in the next generation right okay now next point because it had been verified many times that modification brought in us are not transferred to next generation and thereby lamarck's theory was disapproved so that is why lamarck's theory was disapproved because as i give you the example the modifications were lot of modifications Uh, would have happened by uh, if you take into account this particular theory next point living organism can transfer the character which it has acquired to the next generation this is called ancestry of acquired character now certain character which is transferred from one gen to other gen which is acquired it is put up as ancestry of acquired character ancestry that what our forefathers ancestors were uh, doing up for a long period of time certain particular features character that is passed on from one generation to other generation which is called as ancestry of acquired character now students moving forward various species of monkey now students in your text there is a small activity given to you to search various species of monkeys from the internet right so i had put some species for your knowledge now if you search in google you may get hundreds of species so there are different species now we are aware of few species like monkeys langurs which we see you know vicinity but there are many many species so you can see some of the species over here which i have put forth uh, in the images like gelada species black and white colobus chokmo baboon guineo baboon olive baboon yellow baboon northern plains gray langur now you may have seen normal langur species so it is one of the species in found in particular region were wet mandrel uh, proboscis monkey then suti mongobe red chinook dog now uh, students some species which are unique like mandrel proboscis monkey i put even the animation image in the next page so you can see how actually they look uh, or real uh, look of the species here new world monkeys so you can see here Uh, cotton top tamarind or uh, there are different species in that as well emperor tamarind brown mented tamarind common marmoset now in students marmoset we have got smallest known species 
size of a finger so you can see a pygmy marmoset it is like a size of a finger so you can imagine how small this monkey is black lion tamarind tuft capuchin central american squirrel monkey common squirrel monkey mantled howler monkey as the name howler they keep on howling or shouting black headed spider monkey white face saki so these are found in different different regions in different places here i put some more uh, uh, images of the species here you can see pale headed saki the one which you saw here then here tamarind species here the uh, which is the quite small in comparison black and gold howler the one which keeps on howling like some of you may may be making noise in the class right then uh, sooty mango bay then here uh, the mandel monkey which you can see the animation in the next slide and here colobus species now you can see students here the animation image or some of the species i am not putting all the species some important ones unique ones so first you can see the mandrel species now in uh, uh, some of the movies like uh, uh, hollywood movies they use uh, such species showing extremely carnivorous or attacking type golden snub nose monkey if you see the monkey there is a golden color the nose is very flat that's why snub nose third proboscis monkey see this unique species if you see the nose they are long and flat so the proboscis means nose so it has got a long nose another unique species then here pygmy marmoset if you see the finger over here on which the monkey is feeding on so you can see the image of the monkey and the finger so how small the species is then capuchin monkey so it is breaking on the seeds then third golden lion tamarind again golden colored species called as tamarind species now there are different species in it like emperor tamarind now coming to the next part that is speciation so here i have used a image for speciation that is different species in plants and animals so the diversity which you can see or we can use the term biodiversity so first point formation of new species of plants and animals is the effect of evolution so every now and then new species are formed as well there are many species which have become extinct like most commonly you know the dinosaur species or dodo species or smilax if you have gone to nehru science center in the fourth floor over there they have lot of extinct species also students as i told in the previous part of the uh, video that is first part in this uh, video link or the youtube link you can see two species which i discovered in my laboratory one is a bird species which is 110 million year old another is a worm which is actually amphibia which is a comes under frog family but it is a worm which is a amphibian so you can see later on in the youtube channel lot many interesting things okay second point a uh, species in this group of organism that can produce fertile individuals through natural reproduction now uh, by natural reproduction the next generation which is formed they are fertile means they can again reproduce new species also students if you observe every year there are many many new species found or discovered which might be present in deep jungles of forest region now Amazon forest i hope everybody might have heard about it now there is one such forest where there are lakhs of species which are still undiscovered or ocean now, ocean is so vast that still the deep oceans are not yet discovered if i add you few examples now in the sayadri mountains few years back they found a, a new frog species the nose of the frog is flat and the limbs are Uh, like a duck it is called as nasa batrachus the term nasa is a sanskrit term nasa means nose the nose pointed nose which is similar to that of a fish and few species of birds as well again in amazon forest they found new species of spiders a bird species so there are many species which are still not discovered okay so which are 
being discovered and every year you can see there's a discovery of new species being done then third each species grow in specific geographical condition that is the species they survive they live in a particular condition their food habitat reproductive ability and period is different so every species have a particular lifespan their food habit is different that some may be feeding on fruits or certain particular type of plant etc and their habitat is again different some may be found in a cold climatic condition some in deep forest or a desert region right however genetic variation is responsible for formation of new species from the earlier one so as i gave you the example of frog which is formed from the earlier species so this genetic changes or we use the term variation is the reason for new species besides geographical and reproductive changes are also responsible so along with the other changes the geographical as well as reproductive changes are also responsible similarly geographical or reproductive isolation also leads to speciation now what is isolation means uh, separation now here when you use separation now certain species may be found only in the mountainous region so in the mountainous region the species they will not come out of those region they may be living at that particular region only so they are isolated or some may be found in certain lake region or certain isolated lands so they are uh, these uh, species are found in isolated region also leads to speciation now moving further to the next part that is human evolution the first point biodiversity that is known today has been said to be formed from very simple unicellular organism due to evolution now students as we know the earlier known or first known species are unicellular prokaryotic then unicellular eukaryotic then multicellular eukaryotic or as we learn uh, in the kingdom animalia the starting from phylum porifera followed by the different phylums if i quickly recap all this phylum porifera coelentrata nidaria platyhelminthes ascalminthes annelida mollusca echinodermata and hemichordata then followed by the vertebrates that is pisces amphibia reptilia apes and mammals so students uh, if you observe uh, this particular topic uh, all the different species animation images you can see in uh, the video of the chapter kingdom animalia okay moving further in this evolution origin of human evolution can be shown as per the picture given below the that is you can see this slide in the next part last dinosaur disappeared approximately 7 crore years ago so last known dinosaur they were not present recently but 7 crore years ago so long long ago then at that time monkey like animals are said to be evolved from some ancestors who were or less similar to modern lemurs now what is this lemurs again students i had added the image as a different species and animation in the coming slides so uh, the uh, after the extinction of and uh, the dinosaurs it was modern monkey species uh, modern lemurs which could be seen and all the other ancestors uh, which were present and this present day species were evolved tail of this monkey like animals of africa is said to be disappeared about 4 years ago so even the species is said to be disappeared maybe some uh, lesser known species might be present maybe isolated they developed due to enlargement in brain their hands were also improved and thus ape like animals were evolved now students always there is a confusion monkeys we always tell we are evolved from monkey but being a science student it is not monkeys we call as apes ape if i give you an example gibbon orangutan gorilla chimpanzee there are few of these species which are called as apes all others which you have seen earlier are the monkeys the pictures and the animation but these species which are learning further they are the apes so from the apes the brain development enlargement of the body structure erect posture the hand move 
movement all this started to improve and gave to the present day species which we call as homo sapiens further meanwhile this ape like animals reached the south and the northeast asia and finally evolved into gibbon and orangutan which is more closer to the human species remaining ape like animals stayed in africa and from them gorilla and chimpanzee evolved about 2.5 crore years ago see how the progress has taken place or changes has taken place evolution of some of the 2 crore old species of apes seem to be occurred in different way they had to use their more eating food and other work now students here you can see the lemur how they look so you can see the animation the image if you observe it is looks like a monkey with a long tail right but it's actually the primates the lemurs or uh, for, uh, with these ancestors other species have been evolved so you can see the image how it looks and here i had posted another image where different species of lemurs you can see and specially found in the madagascar you might come across at a madagascar place or uh, there is a animation cartoon movie on madagascar as well right so you can see different species different coloration right now the apes orangutan gibbon chimpanzee gorilla which were evolved later and from which the all other evolutionary process took place right from australopithecus or rhamnopithecus slowly till the homo sapiens so here we can see some more images of different species in apes like uh, here you can see uh, some of the endangered primates endangered they are very few in number so they can also become extinct like the mountain gorilla uh, macaw the tamarind species proboscis monkey which we already saw emperor tamarind we saw golden tamarind bald ukari golden lion tamarind borneo orangutan the gibbon species so again various species we found over so these are the common four species which we always come across now moving further those apes started to live on land as a forest started to decline due to dry environment so as we know in the present day the forest area has become shorter and shorter that's why the number of species have become reduced they become extinct and some are invading the human land right and the reasons are the dry environment at that particular time we started to reduce the forest region their pelvic girdle developed in such a way that they started to stand in erect posture in grassland and thereby the hands became available for use any time so uh, slowly and steadily they started to stand so the erect posture was formed and also the use of hand to carry out various activities these first human like animals with erect posture which were using their hands have evolved about 2 crore years ago first record of human like animals is with us in the form of rhamnopithecus which uh, we can see the image over here from north india and east india afterward the ape of grown up in size and became more intelligent and thus the ape of south africa evolved about 40 lakh years ago so here you can see the place shown over here in the olden uh, day you can say artistic work uh, the earlier known species here you can see how the evolution uh, from hominid that is australopithecus homo habilis homo erectus homo neanderthalicus and homo sapiens sapiens the present day species then further the morphology of these human like animals started to appear like to be member of genus homo about 20 lakh years ago and thus skilled human developed about 15 lakh years ago human walking with erect posture was evolved it may have existed in china and indonesia of asian continent so students from the textbook 1.12 journey of human which you which the image i had taken from the text so here you can see 
ancient animal like lemurs which had begun which again you saw the image then the egyptian or we can say egyptopithecus followed by dryopithecus ramapithecus australopithecus skilled human that is use of hand use of materials then man with erect posture who completely stands erect on the backbone neanderthal then cro-magnum man further evolution of man continued in the direction of developing its brain for the period of about 1 lakh years and meanwhile it discovered and the fire that is how to use fire as you might have seen in some cartoon movies where rubbing the stones to create fire brain of 50000 year old man has been sufficiently evolved to the extent that it could be considered as a member of class wise man homo sapiens so the present day species where the brain is highly developed are the homo sapiens neanderthal man can be considered as the first example of wise man which which was followed by the homo sapiens the cro magnum man was evolved about 50000 years ago and afterwards this evolution had been faster so as you saw the pattern of evolution the neanderthal man uh, the first known wise man followed by the cro magnum man and then the homo sapiens and the present is what homo sapiens sapiens so again i uh, taken the image from the text 1.13 development of human brain now human brain if you say uh, the development how you may measure by what we think how we think right but here it is the volume the capacity of the skull the volume so if you go into the detailed aspect it may be earlier 400 450 cc that is the volume as you do measurement in mathematics in volume cubic uh, centimeter cc right so here also it is in cubic centimeter so here may be 450 to uh, 500 or around uh, 450 at an average followed by further it could be around uh, 700 to 800 further it could be 1000 cc then 1100 or 200 the present it is almost 1400 to 1600 at an average further about 10 thousand years ago wise men started to practice the agriculture it started to rear the cattle herds and establish the cities now later on the practice of agriculture now as you saw in the earlier image 1.12 where use of skilled tools were there further agriculture then cattle herd that is uh, use of cattle cows buffalo that is herds cultural developed took place as a number start to increase they were spreading out in different places so cultural also started to develop art of writing was invented about 5000 years ago thus the history has been started modern science emerged about 400 years ago and industrial society was established about 200 years ago and now we have reached at that this stage and still we are searching the details of roots of human ancestry so even now we have got lot of information but still we are learning or trying to find out more information and also uh, doing various uh, discovery we are or uh, uh, we are still finding out many new things while discovering any particular place uh, or uh, any uh, region where uh, bones skulls are been found of the various earlier known species so here image of homo sapiens cro magnum man and neanderthal again from the text 1.14 students here added one more image for few more addition of species now you have come across neanderthal cro magnum ramapithecus homo sapiens so just to go into detail just for a addition information you can see pleopithecus proconsul dryopithecus oryopithecus ramapithecus which you are learning in this particular part then australopithecus as well paranthropus the stages in between advanced australopithecus homo erectus where first known erect uh, species was discovered or identified early homo sapiens solo man rhodesian man neanderthal 
Cro-Magnum man and modern Homo sapiens. Lastly, uh, here, firstly, welcome to our classroom, that is our YouTube classroom, where uh, the topic which I am putting on is for you to learn and understand, right? And which helps to revise as much you can do further. Lastly, thank you. And always I would like to say, always keep learning, discovering new things, identifying new things, exploring new things and keep learning, which always helps to uh, inculcate scientific values. So thank you students. Hopefully the concept is clear.